Hello, everybody! How do I sound? Let me know how the sound's going. We're gonna be going pretty soon. Sorry, it, it took me a second to get going today. But we're gonna be rocking and rolling in just a sec. Um, but yeah, let me know how I sound. Do I sound weird? How about now? Do I sound weird now? How about now? Do I sound weird now? <laughs> I'm crazy, like always. But let me know how, uh, how crazy I sound. Okay, let's rock and roll. Hey guys. <laughs> hey, it's Louie. Today, we are going to be doing uh, something a bit different. In fact, for the next five live streams, this one included. So this one and the next four live streams, we're doing something kind of fun. Uh, see, I love Earth Day. We all love Earth Day. Earth Day was on Friday, I think, the 22nd. But Earth Day, it's not very fair. You know, it's just one day for the entire Earth. That doesn't seem big, like a lot of fairness. So we're doing a whole month of Earth Day crochet along stuff. And we got something pretty cool going on. So I don't know if you've seen the new recent pattern that just came out on the website, but or on the YouTube channel and website. But we just came out with a brand new pattern for how to crochet a dugong. And this is part of a collaboration that I did with a bunch of other amigurumi artists um, to raise money for the World Wildlife Fund. So that's what we're doing here today. Um, essentially, what happened, what, we, what we're doing is that there are five different designs for five different amigurumi creations. Each of them is based on an endangered creature and you can get the patterns, the PDF patterns, the video tutorials, everything by donating to the World Wildlife Fund. Um, I put all the information, all the links and everything right here, clubcrochet.com slash earth day. You can find it all there, but let's talk about specifically what we're doing today. Today we're gonna crochet a dugong. If you didn't know what dugongs are, they are a very close relative to the manatee and a close relative to elephants, actually, which is kind of cool. Uh, and here, you know what? I got a little, I got a little thing I can read. Let's see. All right. So these are they are gentle giants, and they're the only marine animal that eats only seagrass. It's for that reason that dugongs are also known as ecological engineers because of their consistent grazing, up to 88 pounds a day, which is insane. That's so much grass. <laughs> Um, areas with dugong populations are able to promote faster regrowth for uh, seagrass meadows and this in turn captures a bunch of CO2 uh, and carbon dioxide linked with climate change. So they're very good for the environment and also they're just adorable animals. So 
we're raising money today for the World Wildlife Fund to help protect dugongs and all these other animals that you see on screen as well as like every animal in general. So here you can see a bunch of the patterns that are for me and my fellow artists. This one that we're crocheting today is from Drooby Zoo who just said hello in the chat. Everybody says hi Drooby Zoo. Um, he's in the chat right now. Hello Drew. <laughs> uh oh. Oh yeah, Monkey Lord, no spamming in the chat, thank you. Um, Drew is in the chat right now. We are uh, making a a dugong from his new pattern that's out. You can find it at clubcrochet.com slash dugong as well. Oh, there we go. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Oh yeah, but if you donate, you can actually get access to all of the patterns that you see on screen now. There's a bunch of different artists that made different things. We have this Milan Taper by Ohana Crafts. We have this black footed ferret that's by Lemon Yarn Creations. A pangolin, which this pattern is insane, like in a good way, um, by Sir Pearl Gray. It's just like, look at that, it's crazy. And then my pattern is a snowy plover, which is an animal that's actually on, our, on my beach right outside the window here. And, uh, but it's also a burb because I couldn't help myself and I had to make it a burb. E. <laughs> All right, so let's talk about what you need to crochet this pattern if you want to crochet it along with me during this live stream. And, uh, and then talk about how you can help support the World Wildlife Fund and this channel if you want to. Uh, and then we'll just get into crocheting. Sound good? Cool. All right, so first off, what you need for this pattern if you'd like to crochet it along with me. Let's move these guys out of the way for right now. They'll pop back up if uh, for donations. So what we're going to do today later, not donations, but uh, I mean, yeah, donations. But later we will pop some more characters back in. Every time someone donates, we'll put something on screen for them. Um, so what you need for this pattern is... You'll need the materials, obviously. We're going to be using all worsted weight yarn, 100% cotton. We're going to be using the colors, um, well, normally you need the color gray and uh, just a little bit of black for the nose here. And then you need safety eyes. I'm using 8 millimeter safety eyes in this video. Uh, you'll need a little bit of white felt. You can see it around his eye there. Really, like, you just need a little tiny bit. So I'm just going to be using this much. And that's just an optional addition. You don't need to add that if you don't want to. Um, and then I'm going to be using a little bit of white thread to add a little mustache whiskers here. But I'm not going to be using worsted weight, or I'm not going to be using uh, gray yarn today because since the dugong is such a close relative to the manatee, I thought it might be a whole bunch of fun to do a rainbow dugong and basically make a humanity because it's for the humanity <laughs> and there is Pamela there actually is a tutorial for the earth as well and it's part of this Earth Day collaboration actually so if you donate for uh, five dollars you can get one of the patterns that you saw on screen for twenty dollars you get the whole bundle of patterns and if you donate for thirty dollars or more on clubcrochet.com slash earth day right there you'll get um, the earth pattern and last month or last year's patterns as well so there's a bunch of other ones there's a uh, sloth and actually the sloth is really cool because it's got magnets in the arms so you can grab onto things there's a uh, rhino which I actually couldn't find a rhino to show an example of but there is a rhino and there's a red panda this is also by lemon yarn creations you can see the red panda there um, but yes there is a tutorial for the earth as well um, because I'm using all worsted weight yarn today, we're going to be making, or we're going to be using a size G four millimeter crochet hook. That's the size hook that I most like to use for my amigurumi because I use worsted weight cotton. So that's the kind of, that's the hook and stuff we're using. Sorry, my, my live stream chat disappeared. There we go. I got it back. It's weird. It, it's acting weird, but I got it back. Um, all right. So those are the materials that we're going to be using today. We're going to be making a humanity because we just had to do it. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. I agree. Bravo. It's a genius idea. I'm, a, I'm basically a genius. Uh, <laughs> if you want to get the pattern for this, the actual, the video tutorial for this pattern is out now. You can find it at 
Sorry, let's fix this lighting thing. There we go. You can find it at clubcrochet.com slash dugong or by going right here to clubcrochet.com slash earth day and you'll find links to all the patterns there. Every week we're going to be doing another one of these patterns so please like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, if this video gets 500 likes, we're going to do a giveaway next live stream. So like it. If you haven't already, like the video. It's the cheapest, easiest way to support. Now if you would like to support this project that we're working on, there should be on in the chat right now there should be a thing that says crochet for earth day and you can donate there's also a little tiny heart in the corner of the video it looks like this with two hands like holding each other that if you click that you can donate there as well or you can go to clubcrochet.com slash earth day and donate there um and i will try to give shout outs for everybody that donates but i haven't i kind of broke the system i think so I don't know if I can see it when new people donate, but I'm going to try to keep a lookout for it. Let's see here. Memberships. Oh, that's the other thing. Sorry, I should have mentioned this earlier. If you, the, the video tutorial is free, Brie Bright. However, the PDF pattern and the written pattern, um, you need to donate for or be a Club Crochet member. If you want to become a Club Crochet member, um, memberships get you access to all the patterns on the website including these ones as well and if you sign up for a membership this month uh, we're donating your membership so it's a big way to help additionally donate if you'd like to just become a member in fact if you want to you can become a club crochet pro member which gets you kits mailed to your door each month to make whatever we're making that month this month's kit is going to be a choose your own pattern choose your own kit out of the five different uh Earth Day pattern. So you can choose a kit for the manatee or the taper or the pangolin or the the ferret or um, or my snowy plover. And uh, a part of your proceeds for the pro membership also goes to the World Wildlife Fund. So it's another big way to donate. Honestly, we're just trying to donate as much as we possibly can to the World Wildlife Fund. So any way that you can help support this is a great way to do so. And uh, yeah, they're, they're an awesome organization that helps take care of animals. Um, I do have a few bones to pick with them, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but in general, I love the World Wildlife Fund. I think they're a great, uh, great company. There is a video tutorial crochet sloth for every single one of these patterns. In fact, I recorded them all this week. It was a long week. Each video is over two hours long because I go through every single stitch in the pattern. So it's a long, There, I did a lot of work this week. Let's just go with that. I did a lot of work. I'm very proud of myself, but I did a lot of work this week. So if you uh, want to get the patterns, you can get a video short for every single one of them. And by donating, I'll put something on screen for you to say thank you for donating um, as well. Ari hands can you have a shout out of course you can hello Ari all right so we're gonna be crocheting these um a manatee and we're gonna just start we're just gonna get going and I can chat with you guys while I'm crocheting I've made like five of these so far so I think I know how to do it obviously we're making a dugong however we're gonna call it a manatee just because they're very close and because calling it a humanity is just too funny this is my last of my rainbow yarn too so hopefully we have enough I'm I actually I know we have enough but yeah spicy skittles asks, how do you choose the kits um if you become a club crochet pro member at the very end of the month I'm going to send out an email to everybody and you'll be able to choose your kit that way so you can choose which which kind of kit you want um, and you'll just you'll just basically reply saying I want this one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, in the video tutorial, I did use a stitch counter, but this time, we are living life on the edge. No stitch marker needed. We are crazy here. We're going wild. Cooper! What a solid start to the donation. Cooper donated for $20. Thank you so much, Cooper. If you donate, by the way, you should get a link to the PDF for this dugong pattern specifically. So if you donate using the um, Crochet for Earth Day, like uh, uh, like on this live stream, you still do get the pattern. However, if you want to donate and get like all the PDFs, go to clubcrochet.com slash Earth Day. And if you donate there, you can choose how much you donate for and you'll get a... Um, 
you'll get the uh, the the whole bundle of, of patterns. I'm trying to figure out if I can where I can see. I think I can see it when people do that, but I don't know. I might need to fix something. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Oh, what bones do I have to pick with the World Wildlife Fund? I'll tell you. I'll tell you. And this is actually the bones that I have to pick with pretty much every one of... I donate to a lot of different wildlife um, organizations. And the bone that I have to pick is that they always send me mail. Like, so much freaking mail. And it's like, I'll get... I'll get... Here, let me show you. I get these. I get these calendars, okay? They send me these calendars. This is the state the state parks of California. I get one for World Wildlife Fund. I get, I swear to God, I get like six of these um, a, a, a year. Not to mention I get so much mail, so much physical mail, and it's just litter. They keep sending me stuff that all, I ha all I'm gonna do with it is either recycle it or throw it away, but it's just a waste of paper. It's it's exactly what I'm not donating or what I'm donating to stop. And it just doesn't make any sense. So if you are, if you work for the World Wildlife Fund and you're out there right now and you're watching this, uh, spread the word to whoever the powers may be to tell them stop sending physical mail. You're doing exactly what I don't want you to. <laughs> Send me a digital calendar. I'd much rather have that. So that is the bone that I have to pick with the World Wildlife Fund, is that I don't want them to send me any more of those calendars. Those ones are from 2021. Is that a, No, this one's a 2022 calendar. I swear, I get so many of them. I have so many of these calendars, and I don't want to throw them away because it's like, why waste the trash to throw them away? <laughs> But other than that, I don't have any bones to pick with the World Wildlife Fund. I think they're a very good organization. I really like them a lot. They are. They have a lot of different uh, hands in different pockets too. So they're they're all over the place. Um, okay. So by the way, if you're crocheting along with me, I'm already on round three, baby. I am so. I'm the fastest uh, cat you ever did see. <laughs> Hi, Elif. Hello, everybody in the chat. Okay, Sarah, I will. I have a bunch of calendars. I'll send you some. Yeah, yeah, telephone. Yeah, I, I think that's the, I think that like, you know, I don't know who to, I don't know who we would possibly reach out to to tell them to stop. I can tell them, obviously, stop mailing things to me specifically. But I think more importantly, we should just tell them to stop um, stop mailing things to people in general. Like, make that, don't even make that an option. That just seems like such a waste of paper. But maybe that's just me being a, a, a youth. Maybe that's just me being a young, young fella. Maybe older, the older generation is, is much more comfortable with getting a lot of calendars but i don't need a calendar not in today's world personally ubi doobs asks what were the patterns for 2020 if you want to uh you can support for 30 dollars on clubcrochet.com slash earth day and get the pattern from, from 2020 the patterns for 2020 are a there's a red panda looks like this hello there's, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. You know what? I'm going to put the red panda on screen for Cooper. I'm so sorry, Cooper. I meant to put this out earlier for saying thank you for donating. So there's a red panda. We've got a sloth. I'll put that out for the next donation. Um, there is a rhino, which I couldn't find my rhino. I have it somewhere. Uh, and then there is the planet Earth itself. And the planet Earth pattern is actually way, way cool. It's this thing I made. I designed a brand new way to like read color changes in um, in your patterns. And I used it for the planet Earth pattern. As you can see, 
it's a pretty complicated pattern because it shows everything you know like there's there's africa here is there's russia right here here's australia over here you can see america now, actually this one's not that good i have one that's a lot better i think this is a prototype one because it actually do i have it right here yeah here we go it's just covered it's filled with pins right now but you can see it's a little bit cleaner there's there's america south america in fact we'll probably make one of these on a live stream pretty soon as part of this but this is part of the collaboration and in the pattern it teaches you how to do all these color changes it's such a cool pattern i need to start using that a lot more um very soon uh because they're very 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 cool and uh yeah i i basically wanted to i designed it for the pod people but i never really put it into a lot of um put a lot of work into it so i think i designed it like two years ago and i haven't really used it since however it is a very cool system and i highly suggest you check it out if you haven't already all right so i'm already on round five round five is where we're gonna do some like tricky stuff here drew did this awesome thing in this pattern where he uses um he uses slip stitches and half double crochets to make like the shaping of your manatee. It's really interesting. You guys should totally check it out uh, in this in this pattern. Just go to clubcrochet.com slash dugong to go to the pattern. Uh, and actually, if you scroll down, you can actually find the written stuff as well. But it he uses slip stitches and half double crochets to do shaping in a way that I haven't really seen before. So bravo to Drew for uh, making a really unique way to make amigurumi. I think it's very cool. Uh, and I, I can't wait to see what you do next with this kind of uh, slip stitching and half double crochets and stuff. Um, Lunar asks, uh, did Nicole inform me of your idea to do a movie night? Yes, she did actually. She texted me personally about it too. She didn't just forward me the email. She was like, hey, you should do this. I think it's a great idea. Um, Lunar says that we should do a... Uh, a live stream movie night with uh, with turning red. I think that's what's called turning red. It's the um, the new Pixar movie where she turns into a red panda, and we should crochet a red panda to it. And I think that's a really fun idea. So um, I'm going to consider it. Uh, we have the next like four weeks pretty much planned out, but then after that, I think we that would be a really fun thing to do. Uh, and just to continue on this this road. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There we go. That's pretty good. M Elif asks, am I selling stuff? You know what? I'm not. However, oh, dang, dude. That's a great idea. Jenny says uh, we should watch Fern Gully. I love Fern Gully. <laughs> I love, I love Fern Gully. I, I gotta say, I mean, I want to see Turning Red. I haven't seen it yet, so I do want to see that. However, I do love Fern Gully. That's a good movie. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then I just do slip stitches. Is that correct, Mr. Drew? I think yes, 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 indeed. Slip stitches to the end there. But I do really want to see Turning Red. I haven't seen it yet, so I really want to see it. I'm a huge Pixar fan, so pretty much any kind of Pixar would be good. Um, oh, I'm sorry. The 2021 patterns were the Red Panda and the um, the Rhino. The 2020 pattern was the Earth. Yeah, so that's that's how it worked. So 2020 was Earth. 2021 was all the, was the sloth. The here's the sloth, by the way. Oh, you know what, Jane? Jane. Thank you so much for your donation. I'm gonna put out our little sloth for you. Um, this is one of the patterns from 2021 that uh, that Ubi Dubes was just asking about that you can get in the bundle. Um, and this one was my pattern from 2021. And I, I love it so much. You do like weird color changes in the face to make the face shaping and then the body's made and then the arms are all made on top of that. And then you put little magnets in the hands so that he can actually grab onto things. Um, which I really, I, I don't know. I love using magnets, man. They're, they're the best. I gotta, I use them for like so much amigurumi now and I don't think I'm gonna stop anytime soon. But Jane, thank you so much for your donation. 
Oh my god, yes, the sludge monster from Fern Gully. Absolutely. Okay, where was I? You know what? I'll tell you what I'm gonna do to keep track because I'm not using stitch markers here. I'm gonna keep track. <laughs> here's a little here's a little promo. I'm gonna keep track by using the check marks in the uh, PDF. That's right. The PDF's got check marks to keep track of your progress. It's really cool and you should get one. Let's see. Let's see if I can well, see, I don't know how this I don't know how to get notifications when people donate. I need to get that figured out. I don't need to get that figured out. So we got one, two, three, cat, and then weird round. It's you know what's crazy? He does like this. He does this thing where he'll do like he'll keep switching. He keeps switching off in this pattern, using half double crochets and then also using single crochets and stuff. It's really interesting one two three increases because like now in the round we're using single crochets we went from using half double crochets now we're using single crochets and then we're going to go back after this round to using half double crochets and slip stitches again it is unique in fact every pattern from from the uh this collaboration is really unique from each other um i really liked like for example uh, Lemon Yarn Creations made the black-footed ferret this year. She's actually also the one that made our um, this red panda from the year before. But um, the the uh, black-footed ferret pattern is a no-sew pattern. Like, look at this. Where where did I put it? Right here. Look at this pattern. Okay. This does not look like there's no sewing to it right like no way it looks like the tail sewn on the legs are sewn on the ears maybe are sewn on none of it there you don't you don't need to sew anything together it's all made in the round and you attach things it's super unique um i learned so much basically is what i'm saying this collaboration has taught me quite a lot i learned a lot of different crochet techniques by making these patterns and i think you should too by making them by doing it, donate, or else, or else. This is the only problem with doing these slip stitches, is that it's really hard to work into them sometimes, as you work around, but it's working out. I think that's the last one, let me count. One, two, three, four, five, is that correct? Yes siree, it is. That's round six done. All right, so now we gotta do round seven and eight, which are the same. Um, Five Worlds Explorer, what about the flippers and the tail? The tail in this pattern is actually made in the piece. So the whole body of this is gonna be made in one piece like this. And the tail is made in that piece too. It's really unique. I'm gonna show you in this how to do the tail. However, we do have, of course, the whole video tutorial for this pattern and it teaches you in the pattern itself. But the tail's really unique um, by Drew. He did this like crazy thing where you like flatten it and you crochet into it and you make this like just, I mean, look at that. It looks so cool. The flippers are sewn on, but they're kind of more... I'm going to say that I wouldn't call these being sewn on. I'd call them being attached because they're so easy to sew on. So it's almost like not like sewing something on because you're not like finding all the stitches for it. There's only three stitches to sew on. So it's, it's really just attaching them. You know, it, it's a subtle distinction between the two, but there definitely is a difference. I'm going to cut the end of this because we don't need it. We'll use it to stuff in later. Always save your extra threads to stuff with. Uh, that way you don't need to have too much waste. All right, so I'm on round seven, by the way, if you're crocheting too. By the way, if you want to share your uh, finished dugong with me and Drew, post it on Instagram if you have an Instagram. We're both there. Wait, is it? am I supposed to do five slip stitches? Yes. Four, five, six, three, five. Um, we're both on Instagram. You can tag us there. Uh, we have a club crochet account, of course. And then Drew is just at Drewby Zoo. Uh, that is his handle on on Instagram. You can also check out. We have a Discord channel. We've got a Facebook group that you can share your um, your dugong with us. 
Uh, and if you post it on Instagram, make sure to post it with hashtag crochet for Earth Day. Um, again, you can learn all about what I'm what I'm uh, talking about at clubcrochet.com slash Earth Day, by the way. Five World Explorers, you have a few questions for me. Go for it. What are your questions? Llama Place, I'll see you later. <laughs> Bill's like, we're doing, are we doing dark magic, Bill? Oh, <laughs> Bill's making a sea cow right now. Oh, you know what? Hey, Anna, Naughty Flowers, I got an idea. I'll email you after this. I have, I haven't, we, we were talking back and forth last night, but email me after this live stream. I've got, I've got uh, something I want to ask you. Um, by the way, Naughty Flowers is the one that helps us translate our patterns to uh, Spanish. And uh, we'll, we're going to be working on these. Um, <laughs> well, just ask one at a time, Five Worlds Explorer. One question at a time. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is it ten right? Yeah, we want fifteen. Um, she's she helps us does, uh, translate our patterns to Spanish, and we're gonna be doing that for these Earth Day patterns very soon. So, if you are a Spanish language speaker or know someone that is and still wants to make these patterns, we're gonna have. Uh, and Espanol versions soon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen, one more. Fifteen. Fifteen should do it. And then our slip stitches to get to the end of the round. One. Two. Oh my god, this is gonna be so great. Three. Look at how cute already. I love this color i'm gonna buy this for club crochet this this yarn um because we're gonna use it for like everything because oh my god look at how cute it is Mar marina's already on round 17 so you're a bit ahead of me i gotta catch up to you i gotta catch up to marina because we're on 17. I mean, that's like near the end, I think, right? And I think it's this part is one of the harder parts of the pattern, doing the slip stitches and stuff, just because you need to keep track. It's not just all single crochets. I think all the patterns in this, uh, this year's collaboration are different in such, in like such different ways. It's really cool. I don't know if we're going to do, you know, I'm okay with doing five again next year, but I don't think I can do more than five. It was exhausting. It was so tiring to do five patterns in like a week. <laughs> it was like, oh my God, I was up. Oh, okay. So I don't know. I, okay. So I don't know if this is like happening on the spot or if it takes like a little bit for it to for me to find out about it however we did just get a donation from danielle graham thank you so much for donating um you donated by purchasing the bundle and uh we're gonna put out another one of these earth day ones for you we're gonna put out the taper and i'm gonna talk about that for just a second uh, we'll be crocheting this in a few weeks on the live stream but this is the pattern from ohana crafts aka carrie um, and the reason I like this pattern a lot is because it's really easy. This is a beginner pattern for sure. And I love that about it. Uh, there are a few things you need to sew on. You need to sew on the legs and the arms and the ears and the tongue. But it's all like really a very simple pattern. Not that that's a bad thing at all. That's actually a really good thing. Especially because some of the patterns in this live in this uh, are much more complicated. Especially mine. The Snowy Plover one is like a pretty complicated pattern. So it's kind of nice that we have like some variety there. In fact, that's something that I really want to do again next year. Um, and something I really like about this taper is it's got a butt. <laughs> it was very important to her that you do a little X on the back for a little butthole, <laughs> which I thought was so funny. <laughs> I love that. I loved it. But Danielle, if you are in the chat, make sure to say hi. And I'll just keep track over here. Um, 
Question number one from Five Worlds Explorer. They said they have a lot of questions for us. Question number one was, what's my favorite goblinoid? Now, do you mean what type of goblinoid is my favorite? Or do you mean which goblinoid specifically is my favorite? Because those are two different. Actually, you know what? They're somewhat of the same answers. My favorite goblinoid are goblins. I love to make goblins. They're the best. Uh, if you don't know what we're talking about, by the way, these are patterns in my library that teach you how to make like goblins and orcs and ogres and hobgoblins and trolls. And there's a game you can play with them. It's called Stitched. If you want to learn more about the game, you can find out about it at stitchedthegame.com. Um, it's a super cool game, and we're actually working. I'm I'm working on a new design for the game right now so that we can like make it even better in fact i'm wearing a t-shirt for it because <laughs> i love it so much um but check this out since we're talking about stitch we'll get back to this in just a second um uh, so right now i'm working on a story mode for stitched where you can like actually i'll crochet and talk about this where you can play stitched and uh actually like you play it like D D more so you tell a story and you roll to see what happens in the story. And right now I'm building out the story to play with uh, my girlfriend Jules and some friends of ours to basically test out my, my system that I'm building. And last night I worked on a map for our main, our main city. This is Mogsby, our main town. And I'm working on a little map, isn't it cute? This is just my, obviously this is my rough draft. I'm, I'm drawing it out again later but it's really cool i'll keep you guys informed about how that stuff goes through these live streams and stuff too um and my favorite goblin uh by the way five worlds explorer to answer your question my favorite goblinoid is a goblin and it is shank shank the goblin he's my favorite he's this little uh this little shifty goblin i even have a poem that i wrote for shank he goes this is Shank, the goblin assassin. He'll pocket your pick without even asking and then start to sell it to his old f friend Crash, who doesn't accept picks because Shank owes him cash. He'll then try to... Wait. He'll break into a, a castle to see what's to take and leave that pick there to frame you and make for a break. That's my, that's my poem about Shank. I'm kind of frantic right now. Can you tell? I'm all over the place. I'm all over the place. <laughs> All right, where are we doing? Seeing oh, the goblins made you learn to crochet. That's so cool. That's a cool thing to get you into crochet. I love that. Right, the city is so cute. Here, I'll let me. I'll show you some more stuff about it because I think it's the coolest thing ever. So, this is the. You know what? I can't tell you all about it. There's a relic here. This is a stitched court. This is called the pit. That's where all the goblins live. Or I mean the pile, it's called the pile. Basically, Mogsby is a little town in the, the far north of Goblonia. That's the, <laughs> that's the land of goblins. And they, they dig up old relics of goblins past. And uh, their leader, his name is Porgle the Mind. This is, he's this like blind troll that lives in this in this uh, land, and he needs help to recover some stolen artifacts that he he's been basically like coveting, keeping for himself. It's a cute little story. I'm really excited to share it with you guys eventually. It's got a, it needs a lot of work, but it's gone. Oh, Tina's favorite goblin is Jack Gurgle. Have you guys ever met Jack? Jack is our, uh, I, what, what would you say Jack is? Like, he's kind of like the, sometimes he's like the co-host of the live streams. I think he would say that he is the main attraction for the live streams normally, but we haven't seen him in a sec. He's been out being crazy, you know, doing goblin things, eating grubs and sitting in mud and sh shooting snot rockets. You know what goblins do. Three. Whoa, really? 
This guy who makes wooden finger puppets shouted me out? What? You gotta tell me more about that, T-Savvy. I wanna know more about that. Hello from Russia. Do I know any Russian words? I don't know any Russian words. Mascot. Spokes Goblin. Exactly. That's what... That's what Jack is. He'll come. He'll come back and he'll come say hi in a little bit. Let me get. Let me get to a good, a good point. Oh, the one that I made the staff for. Would that be? I think that might actually be Porgo the Mind. He's he looks like, he's like blind, and he's got like a big staff. You know what? I know where he's at. He's in here, but it's like all the way tucked in the back. He's he's in jail right now. One, two. And then I think we're almost done with round 10, by the way, if you're crocheting also, if you're probably ahead of me I'm taking my time one two three and then this will be four five you know when when uh when drew was sending me the early draft of this um of this dugong he said oh I'm making a dugong and I was like I don't know if we should make Pokemon for uh, the Earth Day thing, because all that I had in my mind was Dugong from Pokemon, whose seal evolves into Dugong, and I just thought that was really funny. I feel like I felt like such a goofball. <laughs> oh, Barnaby! Barnaby's dope, T Savvy. Barnaby's a friend of mine, actually. I I love Barnaby. Me and him, me and him go back a, a little bit. He's dope. If you haven't checked out Barnaby Dixon, go check him out. He's awesome. His puppets aren't actually made out of wood. They're made out of, um, uh, they're, they're a kind of plastic that you, like, mold together. They're not, like, it's, like, a really weird plastic. I think it's, like, called epoxy something or something like that. They're way cool. But if you haven't checked out Barnaby, um, he is an incredible artist. He makes, just like he was, he was saying, Barnaby makes puppets. Um, but they're like super duper miniature puppets. They're like really tiny and uh, have these intricate systems in them so that when you like, like you walk like this and when you like bend your finger in a specific way, it bends the foot or like, or like you can use your thumb and it'll like make the character blink. It's, he makes some seriously incredible stuff. And also he is the nicest dude in the entire world, extremely creative. It's not really resin Ubi dupes. In fact, here I'll show you what it is because I have some too. He he talked me into buying some. It's called um. This is what it is. It's called epoxy sculpt. Um, so basically what you do is you put a little bit of A with B and then you mush it together and then it'll harden in like in like not that long I think it takes like it, ta it it doesn't take it takes like an hour or two to harden or you can use like a black light to harden it actually let me show you some stuff that I've made with it um because I use I use it for making um man where do I keep that I use it for making button like shoulder blades and stuff for my goblins and stuff. Here, let me, you know what? Let me get my goblins out and I'll show you what, what I use it for because it's way cool. By the way, I forgot to say, Tina, thank you for donating. I saw Tina donated earlier. I'm gonna put this little turtle out for Tina. Um, I'll work on a tutorial for this little turtle soon. It's like a no sew turtle pattern, um, but this is for Tina. We're gonna put it right on top of the taper. Um, I meant to do that earlier. Let me find that little. The amount of crocheted things that I have is insane. Okay, so here's an example of what I've made with epoxy. 
it's like the smallest example, but it's a good one. Um, so this is a, uh, like kind of like a dragonborn thing that I made. Um, his name is Ron with two N's. And see his little shoulder blade there? See how it's all shiny too? So basically what I did with that is you can use that epoxy sculpt and then I mixed it with some uh, copper. Uh, it's like copper um, dust basically. And you mix it with copper dust and then you rub the back of a spoon on it and it turns it shiny. This is my first attempt at it, but it looked really good. But is this guy cute? Actually, he's, he's supposed to have a sword. I mean, an ax. He's got like this dope ax that's really cool. I don't know where it is though. This isn't it, but this is a cool axe. Well, whatever. Whatever. This is not a goblin live stream. This is a this is a live stream for the Earth Day crochet along. I gotta stop worrying about goblins and stuff. You get goblins on my mind. You get goblins on my mind, and that's all I can think about. Kelly says don't crochet for a bit. She needs to catch up anyhow. Fine, I'll drink some coffee. Just a little bit of coffee. Let you ca catch up. <laughs> yeah, he kind of is a dinosaur guy, right? It, his head is made with the T-Rex pattern, and then it goes down. And then I think the body is like kind of the Trolls pattern. A little different. But he's pretty cool. I think this is one of my favorites. I don't know where his axe went, though. He had this, like... Really big axe that he had on his shoulder. That was really cool. Ooh, um, am I, are we doing a May the 4th live stream? Let me see, actually. I don't think we are. The only reason I don't... Yeah, it's a Wednesday. Uh, maybe. I. You know what? I might try doing that on a different platform. Because I've been doing all these YouTube live streams, which are awesome, obviously. Um, but I kind of want to keep the YouTube ones on Sunday. So maybe I'll try doing like an Instagram or, or a TikTok live stream on May the 4th. That might be kind of fun. We'll make a little like baby Yoda or something. That could be kind of, that could be kind of cool. Slip stitches are the death of you, says Kelly. You know, so here, my tip for those slip stitches, Kelly, is make them loose. The looser they are, the easier it is to like work into them. So that's my best tip is loosen up your grip a little bit. If you are still having trouble getting into the stitches, use the use a needle to help pry those stitches open a little bit bigger. Uh, Sunshine, I don't have a pattern yet for Ron, the dragon dude. I think I think I called that character like a dragon kin or something. Um, I have a bunch of different characters. We're going to be talking about those goblin dudes a lot more in the um in the future because we're going to be doing a big stitched basically like a relaunch of it soon yeah instagram live stream would be pretty fun i can do that naughty flowers i think it'd be fun to do an instagram live stream i don't have many followers on tiktok anyhow but hey if you are on tiktok you want to follow the club crochet account it's just at club crochet on tiktok and it's at club.crochet on Instagram if you haven't followed us there. Check us out. All right. By the way, I'm on round 12 if you're crocheting along with me. And our humanity is really coming together. I love... Look at this yarn. It's just beautiful. It's like... To me, this is my favorite kind of rainbow yarn. Because there's a lot of different kinds of rainbow yarn that kind of look like unicorn throw up a little bit. Where it's like... Oh my god, so vibrant, so many colors. But I really like this one. This one's by Lily Sugar and Cream. And it's just so, like, I like the pastel rainbows. Pastel rainbows, I think, are my favorite, like, kind of a rainbow. Favorite kind of a rainbow. Who would have known that I had a favorite kind of a rainbow? Not me until now. Who would have known, even? Oh, by the way, hey, speaking of our games, we were talking about goblins, we were talking about Stitched. 
I got an idea for a new game, guys. Really cool new game. Jasmine! Hello, Jasmine! I hope you're doing well. I don't know if you saw, but we talked about you on the last podcast, Jasmine. Jasmine came and visited uh, when we did Stitches uh, West in uh, the beginning of March. She, she came to the booth and uh, gave me like this awesome big crocheted cow that's actually right here. This guy. Look at how awesome this is. It's so cool. Anyhow, hi Jasmine, I hope you're doing well. My... <laughs> Wait, Ubi Dubs, really? Oh, oh, okay, I'll turn the music down for you. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. How's that? Is that better? That might have been too quiet. Ubi Dubs' favorite yarn is Unicorn Throw Up. That's funny. That's an actual yarn. That's funny. Um, Naughty Flowers, do I have Twitch? So I have a Louis Loops Twitch. Um, I think it's just at Louis Loops, L-O-U-I-E-S-L-O-O-P-S. Uh, I wanna make a Club Crochet Twitch and do this, do these Sunday live streams both on Twitch and YouTube at the same time. But I haven't really figured out the best system for it yet because I don't know how to like keep track of the chat. I don't know if like it's gonna split the audience or something. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I got to think of it. I got to think of it more. But I definitely want to start... I, I want to start playing video games on Twitch soon on my Louis Loops Twitch. And the same thing with my YouTube channel, the Louis Loops YouTube channel. I think I'm going to start playing video games on it a bit more because I play video games so much already. And I don't know. I just thought it'd be fun. Um, okay, so now I'm on round... Um, I should probably keep track. I'm on round 13. So, Kelly, you were pretty far. Was Kelly the one that was on round 17? No, someone else was on round 17. Lizzie, did I get your message on Reddit? I don't think I have. By the way, hi, Lizzie. Oh, my God, how are you? I like your image, too. Um, Lunar, how do you get to the rough drafts? Uh, so, I, I'm fixing that. Uh, right now, the rough drafts are kind of broken. So... We're, we're working on redesigning how the rough drafts are going to be done on the website. So just keep 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 a close eye on it. Ask me again next live stream or the live stream after. Um, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to go eight and nine. And then do our decreasing. Oh, got it. One and then decrease. Got it. Um, by the way... Another thing that I don't know if you guys saw on the um, on the podcast, but we just hired two new people for Club Crochet um, to help out with the website. So if you uh, applied, I, I don't know if you guys have been seeing it, but like a few weeks ago, I was looking, we, we put out basically like a call, a call for submissions. Uh, to for a new job for Club Crochet, we hired. Uh, we were looking for web design interns. It was more of like a starting position than an internship, but uh, we got a lot of resumes. It was insanely hard to choose one person, so I ended up choosing two. Even though I, I, <laughs> we were like, uh, uh, can I choose two, please, Nicole? Nicole is my uh, my partner in crime for the for uh, Club Crochet. And she was like, okay, you can hire two. So uh, it was an insanely difficult decision, but we did end up going with two new hires uh, and I'll be announcing them shortly, but we'll have a bunch of new stuff on the website. And thank you to everyone so much that applied. Uh, there were so many applications, so many uh, interviews, and I just want you all to know, like it was very, very, very difficult to choose. Probably the hardest thing uh, I've had to do for Club Crochet yet which is interesting um but yeah we're gonna see we're gonna see some new stuff on the website soon hopefully hopefully some really cool stuff i've got a lot of ideas so let's see how many ideas i can convince uh convince them to do 
<laughs> oh, Johnny... Or Danny, you should have already heard from Nicole. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry, Jenny. You should have already heard from Nicole. She was supposed to email you on Friday. I'll bug her about that. I'll bug her about that. I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean for you to find out this way. That you should have heard from her already. But you should hear from her very soon. I'm sorry. That's that's half on me. Mostly on her, but half on me. 51% her fault. 40, 49% my fault. <laughs> Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 9, 10, 11, 12. That'll be right. I think that's... I Yeah. Marina or Mariana was on round 17. Where are you at, Mariana? How far have you gotten so far? This music is insane. I feel like I'm going through a fever dream. All right, so that was our round 13. Oh, okay, you're we're tied, Billy. You're you're right caught up with me. I'll take a second. I need a I need to drink more coffee anyhow. You know how it'd be. You gotta have you gotta have got your coffee. You gotta get your coffee in ya. Now that I'm finally done making all these patterns, I've got like a few more weeks in April where I can like not really chill out because I do need to start working on next month's pattern. By the way, next month's pattern, we're gonna do something pretty cool. We're doing uh we're gonna be doing um well May May's kit is gonna be for these uh for an Earth Day one, you know? So like you get to choose yours, like I was just saying, you get to choose between the blah blah blah. You'd get the gist. But June's or like at the very end of May when you sign up for it, when you get the kit for June, we're gonna do a um we're going to do a pride a pride month kit that i'm really excited about we're gonna ma be making i'm gonna make a giant unicorn i don't know how giant okay so hear me out but it is gonna be a bigger unicorn than i've done before so i'm super duper excited about designing it i get to use this like really fuzzy yarn to make the fur and then and then i'm gonna try using like mixing cotton and wool basically together we're gonna try some really fancy stuff out I'm sorry, Janie. I, I will... Yeah, I'll, I'll bug Nicole about that. That's... I'm sorry. Ooh, Abby, welcome to the live stream. What are we doing? That, isn't that a great question? Today, we are trying to raise money for the World Wildlife Fund. Um, an organization that is there to help protect our natural planet. And so what we're doing is we're crocheting a dugong. Specifically, we're crocheting a a uh, rainbow dugong. Dugongs are very close relative to the manatee. So we're making a hue manatee. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it, this is a uh, fundraiser live stream. So if you like what's going on here, you'd like to get the pattern for this, um, you can either donate by going to clubcrochet.com slash earthday right there. And you can donate and get access to all of the patterns in the new collaboration uh there's five patterns total or you can um you can donate just you can donate anywhere between five dollars and however much you want after that five dollars gets you one of the patterns um twenty dollars gets you the whole bundle and then thirty dollars or more gets you this year's bundle and the past year's bundle which includes this red panda a sloth there's a rhino a planet earth uh, in addition to the taper and there's a there's a black-footed ferret. They're all designed by different amigurumi artists too. So there's a bunch of different styles of amigurumi. It's also for an amazing cause. So you should you should support. It's very cool. And uh, yeah, just support. Do it. I dare you. Double dog dare you. Whoa, Abby's going to Disney. Oh my gosh, my brother's actually in Disneyland right now. 
What is the difference between a manatee and a dugong? That is a very good question. I th uh, I was just reading about the differences. Um, I actually have, I think I still have it pulled up. Yeah, so there's a few big differences. The big differences um, are manatees have a short, a shorter snout and they don't have incisors. So um, dugongs have like these little teeth at the front of their mouth so that they can like dig in the ground. Um, and they do it so they can grab like um, they so they can eat the grass in the in the ground. Uh, they also have like this like it looks like a vacuum cleaner. It's like a big like open snout like <sighs> it, it. This is like front part, and they like put it straight on the ground, and they like basically like, suck up the ground like a a vacuum, and they use their tooth, your, their teeth to like scrape the floor and grab um uh, grab grass. So that's one of the some of the main differences. The manatees also have little tiny nails on their fins. So their front fins. Um, where did I put that dugong? Here it is. So the front fins for dugongs are just like fins, but the manatees actually have little tiny nails on their fins. Uh, and then the last thing is the tail is really different from between dugongs and manatees. A dugong's tails are like this they're more like a um like a whale kind of tail you know like the it's got like this actual like two kinds of fins coming off of it whereas a manatee's tail is like more like a scoop it's like a big round tail in fact that's probably what we should do for this pattern because we're actually making a manatee so let's let's look at let's look up pictures of a manatee tail we might need to make some alterations just to the very end of it yeah, so it's got to be more of a round tail for what we're making right now. That's going to be easy. I'm just going to do double crochets and triple crochets when we do our connection instead of doing this weird, this, I say weird, but it's an awesome tail thing that uh, that Drew does for his pattern. But we'll do something different in ours since we're making a manatee instead of a dugong. Um, uh, oh, shoot. You know what? I need to go back a few stitches. Actually, no, I don't. I can just stop right there. We need to add the face now. We need to add our face. The first thing we need to do is we need to add our safety eyes and get those prepared. Where did I put my safety eyes though? Oh, uh, no, those are six millimeter. Where did I put my eight mil? Oh, there they are. By the way, if you haven't yet, we got this bottle of eyes in the shop. If you'd like to, um, we have them available in the shop. Did I miss a new one? No. Okay, cool. Um, they, you can get eight millimeter or six millimeter eyes. Comes with this awesome little glass um, container. I've actually got uh, um, some thread in there because I like to keep it with it. But it's got this awesome container with the lid. It's got our logo on the lid. Good way to support the channel if you want to. Bill has actually seen a manatee in real life. That's dope. Where'd you see a manatee? I'm guessing in the wild. Um, okay, I think we want the eyes to be about like, so here's what I do for the eyes. We're gonna measure like, I want it to be slightly thicker than the eye itself. That's about like that long. Maybe give it a little bit long, more. And then I just, cro I just cut a little rectangle out of felt. And then we cut that rectangle into two squares, like that, and we want these to be as close in size as each other, so maybe like right like that. There we go. And then we want to cut both of these into little circles. So this part is just focusing on making as close to an actual circle as it can and this is just you don't obviously you don't have to do this at all but it does add a little bit of white to the outside of your eye which is kind of fun makes it look more cartoony a little bit which is kind of sweet there we go all right and then this one we need to cut into a little circle too Why is Nintendo music just so good? 
It's just so good. I know this song too. I can't place it, but I do know that I know it, you know? You know? Wow, look at that circle. That is a circle. I'm basically a pro. I'm basically like a pro. And then what you do after you make that circle is you need to cut a little tiny cutout on one side, like off center of the circle, and just kind of like make room for Prince Ali or for an eye. Actually, no, it's make way. Make way. Like that. And then you take the back of your eye and you just place it in that little hole. Actually, here, I'll go ahead and do this so you can actually see the hole. Like that. Can you see it? Let me, you know what? I don't know what this looks like right now. Let's zoom in. I'll show you what I'm talking about. You, oh, that's my hand. There we go. See my grimy little fingers. Uh, <laughs> see, so you make this little hole that and then you take your eye you put it over that hole and you push this onto the eye like that and now you have an eye with white around the outside now see how we need a little bit of cleanup there just a just a tiny bit There we go. All right, so there's one of the eyes done. And then I'll just need to do that to the other eye too. All right. There we go. Oh, Johnny. Yes, that's definitely gonna be a huge part of the website. Um, is actually gonna be not only like teaching you how to make patterns and how to sell them, uh, but on the website itself, we're going to be, um, that, that's something that I want to make on the website is a, is an actual place for people to sell patterns on the website. Just basically making a new marketplace for crocheters or for people just to like post patterns if they want to kind of like, like a bit of a rivalry, but specifically for crochet patterns. That's what we're kind of aiming for eventually that's like long term but that is part of the goal Ooh, look at that that's a that's a good hole in the in the eye there yeah and then we also want to add something on the site for like actually selling items that aren't like oh i just realized this one looks doesn't that look like it's got a weird angle to it it does Bar barely but it does does this one have that too no, this one's straight. We're gonna get a different eye. This one's just got like a barely, but it has a little bit of a of an angle to it. Let's get a different one. I don't trust that there eye. I mean, it's probably not even a big deal. But I'm a perfectionist. And look, this one's got, this one's a little crusty on the outside too. We gotta clean this one up too. There we go. Something I want to try doing with my eyes. Well, first, I want to try a few things. One thing I want to try doing is I, I really want to try 3D printing these eyes. I got this plant-based resin that you can make eyes with. So that way I could make my eyes compostable. Because this is like the main part of my, of my crocheted stuff that isn't compostable. Like everything about my crochet is compostable except for this and also the stuffing. But I really want to make it so that the entire piece is like earth friendly. Um, okay, so where did we put the eyes? On the face. On the outside of the second increase. Okay, so that's going to be right. There's the second increase. On the outside of the second increase would be right here. So that'd be one there. And on the outside of the second increase over here. I believe right there. So 
That's pretty good. How many stitches away? 11. I'll try to see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Perfect. Okay. So there's one eye. There's the other eye. That's pretty good, right? I like it. I like it. Yeah, it was looking at me funny. That eye was looking at me silly. It was like, it was like looking at me like this. Hey, what are you doing? There we go. We're gonna eventually like pull the face in a little bit so it has more indented look, as per Drooby's request. Manatees do have that. They their like eyes kind of go in on their body a little bit, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. Ooh, it also says that manatees have a flexible upper lip. Which is interesting, yeah. They're like subtly different, but they look so similar. But that's just us being humans, not seeing the difference. All right, so I need a little bit of black yarn to add our nostrils for our dugong manatee. We're gonna go up and then pick up like that. Inside, start right here, like that. And then we'll go this one down. We just want like the tiniest, idiest, bittiest nostrils. We just gave one of these manatees to a um, a family friend. Actually, no, our our niece. Well, not she's not my niece yet, but Jules's niece gave her a manatee, and they said thank you so much for the walrus. And I was like, oh, whatever. <laughs> it's not a walrus. But I get it. It does have a walrus kind of shape to it. Whoa, you're making a life-size lightsaber that you might sell? I wouldn't sell that, personally. But that's just my... That's just because I wouldn't want to. If you do sell it, do not undersell yourself, man. That, like, sounds like a lot of work. And you deserve money for that. Or just don't get rid of it. Because... That's awesome. That sounds really cool. All right, we got our nose, our manatee, our hue. Hue is coming together. Johnny, Johnny, you're the best in the West. Jenny. All right, Jenny just donated for 30 buckaroos, which is wild. Oh, absolutely. Can I put the cow manatee? I'm going to put two things out for you, for you, Johnny. We're going to start with the cow. You know what? We'll do a double whammy here. So, here's here's your little cow friend, Danny. Here's your cat. Here's your cow. We'll put we'll put your cow in the lap of this sloth here. So keep him safe. And then also, I'm gonna take this other cow, and I'll put it on me for you. Because we have a second cow. And then also, I'm going to put out a pangolin for you, just because I want to show off the pangolin, but also because $30 is like a huge tip, or I mean a huge donation. Look at that. So there's your little cow on my shoulder. And then also, yeah, let's put out, um, where did he go? Here he is. I, first off, I mean, for a few reasons. One. Look at this freaking cool pattern, but also, uh, also it's like I, I was waiting for a $30 donation to put him out because he's just, he deserves $30. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes, Johnny. That's yes. So actually in the, um, in the video tutorial for the, the, um, the pangolin in the beginning of it, I talk about it 
And yeah, they're known for being sneaky. If if a predator comes to them, they have like a bunch of different uh, uh, mechanisms for defending themselves in the wild. One of their mechanisms is that they roll into like a little ball uh, and they have all these like plates on the back of them that help them. They're made out of keratin, which is like the same thing that's made that your nails are made out of. But also if they mess with you, they fart. They, they, they essentially do what uh, skunks do. They shoot out a little stinky fart on people and they, uh, but yeah, that's what pangolin, that's one of the things pangolins do. They're so cute though. Look at this crazy pattern though. This pattern's wild, dude. This is part, of, obviously part of the collaboration. Um, this one's by Sir Pro Gray. When he sent it to me, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I was like, how am I going to do this? And then I made it and I was like, oh my God, Sir Pro Gray. Like, you're wild, dude. This pattern's crazy. There's so much that goes into it. First off, the claws are crazy, are like made really wild. But this plate on the back, it's so cool, guys. I, I'm really excited for this pattern. Um, obviously, we're going to be crocheting this in a few weeks on a live stream too. So hang tight for that. Um, every week we're doing a different live stream fundraiser for the next uh, for the next few weeks. We're just gonna we're trying trying to donate for the World Wildlife Fund. So yeah, if you want to, you can. Um, okay, where was I in the pattern? Now that I'm back to now I'm back to it. We're six one two three four five, and then six is gonna be here, and then our decreases. One decrease, one decrease. Cool one invisible decrease there we go okay here we go is the is the inaugural neck crack ready it's for you it's, it's not for me it's for you Um, Daniel, Daniel asks, what are the animals from 2020? There's actually no animals that are from the 2020 live stream or from the 2020 bundle. Um, but the planet earth itself. So, uh, earth, this, this is, this is the 2020 pattern. It, 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 so it might not seem like much because it's small. However, this pattern is wild, dude. It's super cool. I use color changing, like a brand new color change chart for it. It's a fun one. I, I think this is probably one of the most fun patterns for me to crochet because you can make it in like, you can make this in like 20 minutes because there's not very many stitches to it. And the way that I made the chart, you actually like crochet it. Just check the pattern out. It's really cool. You can actually find this pattern at just clubcrochet.com slash earth. Also, I think that's where you can like go directly to that pattern if you want to see it. It's really cool though. I'm, I'm a big fan of that one. I'm a big fan. I'm a giant fan. So you want six of these decreases. One, two, three, four. This will be five and then one more. One and then decrease. There we go, that's the last decrease for us. Pretty good, pretty good. Cool. And then just single crochets, right? For a while? Yes. Cool. Can I please make a beluga whale sometime? Yes, I actually have made a beluga whale before. I've been wanting to make one for a while, but I haven't found any good ones. So if you could, I love this channel so much. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Kelly, you rock. Um, I actually have made a little tiny beluga whale before. So I think something, uh, one of the like themes of patterns that I'm going to be doing in the near future is we're going to be doing uh, more underwater wildlife patterns. And one of which being a make your own whale. It'll be like a tutorial that teaches you how to make miniature whales, but a bunch of different kinds. You can make beluga whales and um, bears and uh, killer whales and narwhals and like a bunch of different kinds of whales. It, it is kind of going to be like the bonimals, but for whales, is the is the basic idea there. 
Just a very tiny pattern. And yeah, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. Jules actually is a part of a band called Baird and Beluga. That's actually why I made that. Um, and she's on Spotify. Hey, if you haven't yet, go check out Jules's music. Baird and Beluga on Spotify. B A I R E D, or is it might just be B A I R D and Beluga. Uh, by the way, a Baird is another kind of. Uh, it's another kind of whale that looks kind of like a dolphin. Um, okay, we need two rounds of this. The whale moles Exactly. Yeah, the whale moles Humanity is really coming together. I gotta remember not to do the tail, uh, to do a different kind of tail for this though. Ooh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat you to finishing it, Marina, or Mariana. Cause I think I'm on round 18 now, or I'm about to be on round 18. I'm catching up to you, and I am at home. <laughs> All right, where am I at? Where am I? What's going on? Who's that? Okay, couple more. One and two. Yep. Do -do 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 -do. And now we need to stuff it a little bit. Um, I'm gonna use. I got some regular stuffing but i also got like a bunch of extra thread so i'm gonna need some of that so we're gonna need some of this thread and then obviously obviously we we'll use some regular stuffing too i'm gonna start with regular stuffing up to the head Yeah, this guy's name is going to be Hugh. It just makes sense. His name is Humanity. Because cause he's, he's a Hugh. Yeah, she's an amazing musician. You should check her out, Front Loop fella. Fellow? She's on Spotify. Here, I'll show you. I'll pull her up on my Spotify. This is them, Baird and Beluga. They only have a few songs there, um, Where Are You Now and The Pool, but they're great. You should really check them out. I drew that, I drew that also, so that's kind of fun. But yes, go check them out. They're awesome. When should I order the Earth Day Pro Membership? Right now, Abby. Anytime before now and the end of the month. So, uh, honestly, the earlier, the better, because, um, you'll be able to get that email to choose what you want for the, for the kit sooner. So right now you should sign up for it. ASAP. One, two, and then you'll be able to choose between, uh, the pangolin, the taper, the, uh, dugong and the black footed ferret and the, um, uh, the snowy plover, my pattern. My pattern is a burb though, so it's a little different. I think we got a new donation. Yes, we did. A donation by Rachel. Thank you, Rachel. I don't know if you're in the chat. I'm gonna assume you are maybe. But if you are not in the chat, uh. Regardless, thank you so much, Rachel. Um, we're going to put something out to say thanks in just a second. 
Um, let's put out an elephant for you, Rachel. This is Ellie, our elephant. We're gonna put Ellie on, um, we'll put it in, in our red panda's lap. Close relative to the, to the dugong also. What pattern did they do? They did, they did a $5 one to get the, the dugong. Oh, awesome. Very cool. By the way, again, if you donate on this live stream, you hit that little, um, the little heart in the corner of the chat, or you just donate to the World Wildlife Fund using the link on this live stream, you'll also get the dugong pattern. So you won't get every pattern in the collection. If you want every pattern in the collection, check out that link right there. But if you donate here, you'll get this pattern at least. And I put a lot of work in the PDF. Uh, it is, it looks really good. Let me um. Maybe I'll show you that in a second too, because I'm so proud of it. All of the patterns in the in the library are like so cool. Let me see. How do I pull it up? I'll go. I'll just go to the website. Um, I gotta log in. Hold on. Remember me. Log in, because I want to show you it. Because I, I just I put a lot of work into all of them. And so it'd be a shame not to show you once it loads. One, three, four, all right. Here is what the PDF looks like. I don't know if you can see that. Look at how cool this is, okay? So I made the PDF. I, I tried to put a lot of extra work in the PDF this time. So not only like every page, it just looks like a book, I think. Um, you can learn more about dugongs. And what I've added to these PDFs now is where you can click this jump to start and it'll jump you right to the beginning of the pattern because you can jump like past the materials, the video tutorial, all that stuff. And then also all of these have check marks in that. I don't know if the check marks, yeah, you need to open this in the, in a different application, but it's got check marks for everything, all the tutorials, and then links for all the other tutorials too. And look at, I just feel like it looks so, doesn't it look so crisp? Oh, I'm very proud of that. I'm very proud of it. I spent a long time like really trying to make sure that the, the design looked really nice and I'm just really proud of it. All right. You're struggling. You're struggling with the slip stitches. Do we do it on our both loops or just the previous both loops, Ubi Dubs? Yeah, you want to go both loops, it, and that is tricky. It's only for a few rounds that you got to do that, uh, which is why I say like don't do it too tightly. Try not to slip stitch too tightly. Um, but yes, you do want to go under both loops there. Yes, Hugh the manatee. Hugh, Hugh manatee. Yes. Yes, yes. Oh, it's so cute. Oh my God, this is so cute. Jules is going to freak out. I can't wait to show her. Jules is such a fan of, of rainbows. So I'm excited to show her it. Ooh, those thumb cracks. Mm, mm can't live without them all right where am i in the don't make fun of my cracking my knuckles i do it too often i know okay i know eventually my fingers are gonna fall off i know this about myself they probably already would have fallen off if i didn't crack them so often though that's what i think all right The Christmas music. We need to change this. We don't want to listen to Christmas music. Christmas in not Christmas time. Let's go through the woods. Or let's do sunny day. Yeah, something chill. 
うんトゥルルー All right back to it now that I've now that I've gotten my dancing out Hey, if you haven't yet, make sure to like this video down below. If this video gets 500 likes, which is, I mean, it's a lot. So I don't know if we're going to get there. But if we do get 500 likes, I'll do a giveaway next live stream. I'll do it. I promise. Um, okay, I think that's round 20. Yeah, that's round 20 done. My. Oh, okay, it's catching up. I was like, why is my chat going crazy over here? But it's it's just catching up. Um, okay. We're on round twenty one. What yarn size am I using? I'm using worsted weight yarn. Um, I'm using one hundred percent cotton. Uh, it's my favorite kind of yarn to use for amigurumi. This is, uh, I believe this is Lily Sugar and Cream. I bought this like literally like a decade ago. I bought this yarn. So this is actually the last of it. I'm going to be out of it after this. So I'm going to have to either, hopefully they still have it available. So I'm going to try to order some. Uh, and then I'm going to try to order some so that we can have them for sale on Club Crochet also. So if you want to purchase some of this hue... Uh, manatee yarn you can and it'll help support the channel too so that's good that's the plan we'll see how that goes I'm gonna put some effort into that this week um, before I go any further I'm gonna stuff it just a little bit more because it's gonna be easier to stuff right now especially with threads like this so we're gonna we're gonna try to get these threads in there and it's just a little bit of stuffing in there before we do our next round because the next round is gonna be it's going to be so small that it's going to be hard to get extra threads in there. Oh, the humanity. <laughs> Kelly's manatee's bloated. Been eating too much, too much seagrass. Let's try this thread. This is some extra from the um, pangolin pattern. I had a bunch of extra yarn, but I can't use it for anything. It's, it's just enough where I can't really use it for much. So I'm gonna just use it for stuffing. Just enough. I could do like, I don't know. I could do something, I guess, with it, but. This way we don't have to throw it away. Oh, Naughty Flowers, that's a great, cool thing. I love that. Yeah, my favorite thing to make is tiny patterns, too. But it's always fun to sometimes do a big pattern like this. I mean, not like this is that big. I, You know what, though? I really want to try to make one of these with bulky yarn and see how big it gets. That'd be really fun. Does anybody know that? Oh, Rita, that's a good question. Hi, Rita, by the way. After, I keep saying what? After, wait, what? Janie, what do you, I say, I keep saying what? That, you're funny. Oh, oh, the humanity, that's it. Oh, the humanity! Yeah, that's it. After burning the tree. I get what you're saying. Good old Grinch. There we go. All right, now we stuff it as much as we can because we can't stuff it after this. 
I guess technically we could go one more round and then stuff, but we'll just get it done with here. Ooh, Super Mario Sunshine music. Yeah, that movie's so good. We should we should do that another uh, movie night near Christmas to watch The Grinch again. We did that last or two years ago, I think. In when we were in quarantine, we did that. We should do that again, though. We need to do more movie nights. I just haven't had the I like it's just been so busy. I haven't been able to like schedule these movie nights and figure out like the actual logistics to it. Leaf sauce. Have I ever tried fingering crochet? No, I haven't tried finger crochet. Um, not really. I mean, I've tried like some some stuff, but I, like like maybe a blanket or something. But yeah. Bye, Takoyaki. Thanks for joining. Gotta love Takoyaki. Takoyaki's amazing. Not only like the food, but also the person. Finger crocheting is is exactly what it sounds like. Crochet sloth. You crochet without a crochet hook, so you do it with your finger instead. Um, yeah. So you like like you use your finger as a hook, which means that you can't do it with like the little yarn like this. You got to use like bigger yarn. Two years ago. Wow, that was two years ago that we did that Earth Day or the movie night. We need to do more movie nights. More movie nights and more book clubs. I want to do a book club again. But I think I want to do the I want to do a different kind of system for the book club next time. Because because I can't like play the book live. I don't know. I I just I'm trying to figure out a better a better system for the book club. Basically. Oops. One, two. All right, I think that's it. Two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good. How long have we been going for, by the way? Cool, two hours. The, the nice thing about today's live stream is it, it will be a little bit shorter, um, which is actually really nice because I like this week has been insane. I I didn't tell you, so I told you that I that I've been working really hard on these patterns, but I didn't tell you how hard. On Thursday night, no, yeah, Thursday night because Friday was Earth Day. So Thursday night to get everything ready, I did a 24-hour sprint. I started work at like 10 a.m. On Thursday and then I was up till so it wasn't it wasn't exactly 24 hours it was uh, I stayed up till 8 a.m. on Friday to finish up everything and it was working straight through I've never I, I honestly think it was the longest hardest I've worked since college on something um, and I felt like this this stream of pride you know when you do something like that you just get this like pride for what you did and you're like Yes, and it felt good because it was I knew it was for like a good cause and everything too. But gosh, I was so tired. Friday and sat and yesterday I was like a zombie. Just still recovering. I'm I'm actually really glad I didn't get sick. <laughs> I thought I might get sick because of that, but I'm really happy with that. Yeah, that's exactly it, Naughty Flowers. We will listen to a live stream book. Uh we'll we'll listen to a book. An audiobook and crochet something from that book live. Okay, so now I am at the bottom. Um, I'm actually at round 25 for the dugong. But we're making a manatee, and the manatee has different tail than the dugong. Um, that's the biggest difference. So dugong's tails look like. Where did I put. Why do I keep like losing my dugong? I'm losing my mind, is what I'm losing. Here it is. Okay, so dugong tails look like this, more like a whale's tail, you know? But what we're gonna do is we're gonna make it rounded instead like that. So we're gonna like not make it so it goes, we're just gonna make it round because that's what manatee's tails look like. And I'm gonna update the pattern for this after. Oh, I would love to do Coraline, the book. I love that book. Okay, so here, um, Kelly, I'm gonna teach you, I'm gonna explain exactly what we're gonna do different for the tail. The main 
idea of what we're doing for the tail is exactly the same as the PDF. Um, let me zoom in, actually, so I can actually show you what's going on here. Get it nice and zoomed. How's that look? That's pretty good. Okay. So essentially, what we do for what we do for the tail is we want to work into. I'm gonna pull my loop out here. We want to work into this side. Like that's the next stitch, right? But we want to work into that one and the other one from the opposite side at the same time. So we're basically like flattening it and sewing it together, but doing crochet stitches to keep it sewed together. Now in the pattern, the pattern for this is you do like the two double crochets in this one, and then you do a single crochet slip stitch. I think what I'm going to do, because we want to make it, we don't want to make it like this, you know, we want to make it round. So what I think I'm going to do is I think we'll do, we want to get to, I think double or maybe even triple crochets in the center. And maybe we'll do like half double crochet. Let's do like, let's try maybe like one half double crochet into the first stitch, which again, that's going to be this, these two can combine. There's 12 stitches around. So that means we've got six stitches to work into here. And so I think what we'll do is maybe do, um, maybe we'll do two half double crochets in the first and then a double crochet in the next. And then to the next two, maybe two half, two double crochets and then another double crochet and then two half double crochets in the last. And let's see how that looks. Before I do that though, we wanna chain one. So let, let's see how this goes. We're gonna start by chaining one. And then with the crochet hook, I'm gonna go into the next stitch and then into the first stitch that we made. So the easiest way to do that is really like, just find it, get over there like that. And we're gonna do, um, oh, I'm sorry. We wanna do two half double crochets in that. So we wanna yarn over and then go into that stitch and then into the one across. Is that this stitch? No, no, no. Actually, it's this one all the way over here. There we go. Let's make sure we have that right. That's one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So try to really make sure you're into that last single crochet that you made. Pull through it and pull through two. That's going to be our first half double crochet. And now we'll do another half double crochet. Let's try another one into the same stitch. See how that looks. Basically like a half double crochet increase in the first one. And then we'll do a double crochet into the next one right here. Okay, and then let's try two double crochets into the next two stitches. So we'll yarn over, here's the next stitch. Let's try two double crochets into it, see how that looks. One, and another one into the same stitch. Be two. And then we'll do that again. Two double crochets into the next stitch here. Let's see how that looks. One. I like that we just changed over to green. Two. This might be too full, like too open. I think maybe we want it to be flatter. So maybe our first one shouldn't be two double, two half doubles. Maybe we do one half double in the first stitch instead of two. So it's not so like, see how it's more like a fan? Let's, let's undo that. Okay, so we're gonna undo this and we're gonna undo it till we just have one half double in the last stitch and the first one that we made. So one half double in the first, we'll still do the two in the center, but we'll do one half double, move up to a double after that. Yeah, and that'll make it less like fanny. And then we'll do two doubles in the center of both stitches in the center. So there's one and two. And then we'll do another two double crochets. One. We'll do another one into the sti same stitch. And see how I'm like going into this one and the back loop at the same time? Or back crochet. Two. That's pretty good. We'll do another double after that. So one double crochet into the stitch after those two double crochet increases. And then to our last one right here, we'll do a half double. Just one half double crochet into that last one. And yeah, I think that's, that'll be about it. And that way it'll be more rounded. And then I think all I need to do here is we can cut their yarn. We don't need a very long end. We're just gonna hide this end. We still need to make our fins and stuff. 
But then we can just pull it all the way out. Yeah, they look like a shovel or a spoon. Yeah, totally. And then I'm gonna hide this end. So the way to hide the end here is you wanna look for the place where you crocheted into. That's gonna be right here. And we wanna go into the back of it like that. Like so. And then into where this end is coming out. So right into that. And then just like hide it into your stitches down. Like see how I'm like working into the back of some stitches? And that, that's supposed to mimic the top of your crochet and kind of like hide that end in there. Well, it looks a little messy, but. Fix that up a little bit. And then we'll just keep hiding it into a backs of a few of these stitches. So, so that we know it won't come undone. Oopsies. Let's try that again. That. Now we'll thread this on our needle. All right. And let's see how this all looks. Stretch it. All right. We'll zoom out. Okay. And we'll cut the yarn nice and close. Let's see how our humanity's tail is going to look. I like that. Okay, so now you can see what the difference is. So this is a manatee tail. It's round. This is a dugong tail. That's going to be one of the huge differences between the two is the tail. Okay, cool. I think that looks pretty good. Personally, I'm pretty proud of that. Yeah, I'm so down for the... for. Um, Coraline, by the way, Janie, I think, I think that would be way cool. All right. So now we got to make, um, some fins. I've been doing this thing recently where when I'm done with yarn, I actually just like fold it over my arm like that or my shoulder. I think it's kind of funny. All right. So we're going to, but then I lose it. <laughs> All right. So now we got to make some fins. Um, and the fins are, the fins are really quick and easy actually. Pretty easy. Uh, now, technically, manatees do have different fins because they have little um, they have little nails on the ends of their fins. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deal with that. That's I don't I I don't want to like mess up the rainbow basically. So we're just gonna keep do, we're gonna make them the same way because they're basically they're very close to this to the same. And two. Okay. One more here. Boom. We're gonna need to make two of these but one at a time. You, I bought a pattern for the doll or jumping mice. I'm confused. You, you bought a jumping mouse pattern. That's interesting. Tell me more. Tell me more, Jenny. Okay. God, this this song brings me back. It reminds me of middle school. And then we decrease it back down. One, two. He did this interesting thing in the fins where we increase up and then immediately in the next round we decrease it back down, which is pretty cool. And then one. And... 
too. See, we got little tiny fins. And then, uh, and then we basically, we connect the fins the same way that we did with the manatee's tail by finding the first one that we work right here. And we crochet them together to make it flat. In fact, uh, actually a few designers did that in this, in this, uh, in this collaboration. The black footed ferret is made similarly. You crochet into both sides to like flatten it and sew it together. Kind of a nice little technique that uh, I know I don't really use very often in my crochet. I did use it in my sloth pattern last year, but yeah, that's pretty good. And then we cut it. We're gonna sew this onto the side after we make another one of these. Let's get going. Oh, a top hat would be cute. Um, we are almost done actually. We're at uh, two hours. All we need to do is make these and then sew uh, it together and then we're gonna call it. So it'll be a nice short uh, live stream today, which I actually could use, to be honest. Like I could probably use a, uh, I could probably use a, a Sunday break. Um, so we're probably about 15 minutes till we're done, I would say. Yeah, I think so. Wow, you're 1 a.m. right now, Five Worlds Explorer. You are committed. I appreciate that. <laughs> tacos are done. Congratulations, Kelly. Have, in, enjoy your tacos. I'm jealous. Six. Yeah, so I think we're about 10 to 15 minutes done. Till, till the end. Ooh, Casey. That's a great. You know, we're going to do a fun... Um, uh, we're going to be doing a fun colored snowy plover when we do our snowy plover live crochet along um that's going to be in may though so we've got we've actually got a few weeks until we get to that but we will do something fun for that because that sounds like a really fun idea um jenny we are definitely doing uh Coraline. We'll, we'll i'll do Coraline, something Coraline related because i like Coraline a lot I, maybe even just maybe even just a movie crochet along if we can't do the whole book um but yeah I mean, but we could do like a book club. It might be kind of fun to do like a book club that like, maybe like we all do the audio book crochet along together, like separately. Like we don't have to do it all together when we do the book. And then we get together after we've all read the book or listened to the audio book and we do a live crochet along and we just talk about the book. You know, we talk about our favorite parts of it. Maybe we do that as the movie night too. I don't know. We could do something fun though. I think that'd be kind of cool. Okay. One, two, I think I'm decreasing it down. Yeah, now we're decreasing it. And we're gonna have, how much yarn is gonna be left over here? Oh, just a little bit. Maybe enough for like a, an octopus or, or a bonimal, which would be good. I should totally make bonimals out of this cool rainbow yarn. One, two, okay, flatten this, crochet it together, um, this stitch, right there, right there, right there, this stitch right there. And then one more right here. I'll have Jack, oh, Tina. I'll have Jack say goodbye. I'll, I'll have Jack come in and say hi, bye before the end of the live stream for you. Because I know Tina's a big fan of Jack. Probably Jack's number one fan. I think Tina, I think it's fair to say that you're Jack's number one fan. Unless anyone wants to contend with that. So I just cut a little bit extra of our rainbow yarn for adding like the eyebrows but we won't really we'll, we'll figure that out in a sec so first off let's sew this these onto the body the manatee we wanted to sew it on so that they're angled forward like that go up and we're gonna have to fix this as we go we just go one 
and stop right there. Like all the way up to there will be. Is that too far up? Maybe that's too high up on the body. No, I like it. Let's do it. One. Oopsies. Two. And then this one. See, this is why I said earlier that like it's more like just attaching the fins because that this is it. Boom. That's all you need to really do to attach the fins. It's very, very easy. It's like the easiest sewing for a pattern like ever. Let's see? Oops. Hopefully that wasn't too high up on the body. It looks really high up though. Well, actually, I mean, does it though? Eh, it's not bad. We can, we'll, we'll, we're gonna keep it. We're gonna go right into body out where we came out there so we can double knot it together. Tina is Jack's top fan. Yeah, number one fan. I gotta make Jack gurgle pins for you, Tina. Or a sticker or something. Or the pattern. I gotta make the pattern for Jack Gurgle so you can make your own Jack Gurgle. I don't know why I haven't done that yet. It, I Well, I do know why. I haven't because it's a hard pattern. <laughs> and I was just kind of like goofing around when I made it, so I didn't really write anything down when I made it. So I need to work on that. Okay. And then this fin will go right here. Uh, we, do we want it higher up, like right there? So that's closer to the other one, even though it's a little high up. I think right like this. That's where we'll start. Oop. I agree. I agree with Bill. I think you're about twenty thousand and eighty nine years old. The world the world explorer asks how old we think they are and i think that 20,000 uh around 20,000 years old i mean give or take 100 years it's probably right because i mean if you explored the entire world if you're the world explorer you know that's that's a lot of world to explore you probably are about 20,000 years old or oh, a little bit younger maybe you're uh 5,000 years old that's a that's a lot younger though you just said just a little younger. So maybe you're only like, maybe you're 15,000 years old. Probably 15,000 years old. Like at least 200,000. <laughs> Hello, Fennis Fire. How are you? Thanks for joining. All right, double knot in these. And then we just need to add eyebrows and sew in the head a little bit so that the, so that the face kind of gets like pulled in. And then we'll be done today. Early, nice, quick live stream, which is oh, so nice. I love these quick patterns too. I love this pattern. Drew, I don't know if you're still here. You're probably not, but uh, Drew, you're amazing. Um, we're gonna be doing a live crochet along on Drew's uh, TikTok um, this week also. So keep an eye out. Go follow me on TikTok. We're at Club Crochet on TikTok, and he's at Drewby Zoo on TikTok. Go follow us. We're going to be doing a live crochet along for another one of these manatees, or sorry, dugongs, um, this week. Go out there. Cool. See, I like adding the eyebrows to it because it kind of pulls in the head and then it also adds a little bit of a, a little bit of like personality. See, so you've got little personality to them and we'll just pull it a little tighter and it'll pull in the face a little bit, which is nice. 
We'll double knot this, and I think we're going to call it on Hugh. Jack can come say hi bye, and we'll rock and roll. Nice early end of the live stream. That's, you know, we've been doing a lot of four hour live streams, so it's kind of nice to do a two hour one. There we go. Poke that in there. And there's Hugh. He's even got his arm up. Hello. Hugh Armanity. Oh my gosh, Hugh. Look at that. Oh, I love him. Oh, I love him. Humanity. C'est fini. C'est parfait. Oh. C'est belle. Oui? No? Ha. Ah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, let's. First off, again, if you haven't yet, please consider donating to the World Wildlife Fund and get this entire group of patterns. Again, there is this pattern for our dugong. We've got this black footed ferret pattern. We've got this pangolin pattern. There's a. Um, a snowy plover. That one's my pattern from the. From the library. He's going to be riding Hugh. Have him sit right there. And then there's a... Do we have a... Oh, the taper. Where's the taper? Here. Taper. Oh, the taper's back there. Well, we have a second taper. So, go get that. It's at clubcrochet.com slash earth day. You can even get these extra patterns like this red panda and a sloth and a rhino. Go check it out, clubcrochet.com slash Earth Day. Here, we'll have Hugh say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching, guys. Let's have Jackie, good old Jack. <clears throat> this is for you, Tina. Biggest Jack's biggest fan. Thanks for watching, Tina. Everybody, really. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you donate to the World Wildlife Fund and also give me money. I like money, too. Jack, this one isn't about you, bud. This is this is like one of the one times where it's not. No, don't look at me like that. It's for we're doing something. We're like trying to raise money for animals. But I want money too. Jack, buddy, not now. <laughs> Anyhow, give me money. I like money and also uh, bugs. I like to eat bugs and. Uh, mm. I've been collecting toes recently. I found a toe in the trash the other day, and I started a good collection of toes. I got two toes so far. If you got any toes and want to send me a toe, um, uh, I have my P.O. box is uh, no, no. We're not having toes sent to you. Okay, well, next time. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Bye, Tina. Bye. Okay, see you later, Jack. He's so weird, dude. Started collecting toes and everything. What a creep. What a creeper. Anyhow. <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to like, subscribe. You know all the fun stuff. Uh, donate. Yeah. I'll see you guys next week, next Sunday. Uh, we're going to be making... I think we're going to be making a taper or the black-footed ferret. I'm not totally sure yet, but we're going to make one of those next Sunday. All right. Bye, everybody. I'm host la pizza. And you know what? Actually, mm, no, you hang up. Oh, my God. You hang up. Stop. You are so bad. No, you hang up. You hang up. No, you hang up. Do you want to say bye? No. Well, what? You hang up first, though. I can't hang up yes, because you, you got to hang up no, first. No, you hang up. Oh, my God. No, stop you it. hang up. Do you want to say hi real quick? Oh, you can't see me. Hi. <laughs> you hang up. You hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. No, you hang up. I don't want to hang up because you need to hang up. Can you hang up? No, no, you hang up. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody.